Dear friends, ITC and other friends, today I come to you to speak of somebody very dear to my heart. Somebody who on the 16th of January this year lived the happiest day of his life. I'm speaking of Father Dr. Francois Brun, who left us on the 16th of January. Father Francois Brun was a, a renowned theologian, writer, psychical researcher. And he used to say, frequently, at least to me, he used to say, the day of my death will be the happiest day of my life. A sentence that I found very interesting and very tender, which I cherish. I met Father François Brun in the year 1995. I had recently been appointed to Galicia as Consul General of Portugal, and he came to, one, um, to give a conference here in one of the very beautiful buildings of the city, invited by a well-known newspaper in Spain. I went to this, um, they invited me, I went to this conference, and the next day he was still in Vigo. I invited him for lunch. We had lunch at a beautiful restaurant overlooking the ocean, and there we spoke about so many interesting subjects. He was a living encyclopedia, François Brun. When we said goodbye and he returned to Paris, he told me, à toujours, chère Annabella. And that's another thing that I will never forget, because he would always say goodbye with these words, à toujours, in this case, Cher Annabella. Francois Brun published over, um, I mean, wrote over 30 books on the different subjects of his interest, from mysticism to the saints to the teachings of Jesus Christ to his devotion to, to the service of God and to ITC. One of these famous, book, famous books, indeed a bestseller, was, I will show you, Les Morts Nous Parle. This was published in the late 80s, I think, and um, it became viral, as it is said these days, of things in the internet. Then, years later, there was a second volume, which is here, volume two, about ITC, about ITC also published with the, the Sorbonne professor Rémi Chauvin, à l'écoute de l'au-delà, here it is, and so many other books. I don't have all these books not the ones on the religions and uh, theology and mysticism, which do not interest me so much. Anyway, in 1995, I had not yet started my ITC experiments, which I did by the end of 1997, and got, and got my first results in January 98. So, from then on, I was in closer contact with François Brun because he was one of the people in the world, together with Professor Ernst Senkowski, who knew more about ITC and EVP. And uh, I visited him many times in Paris, also at his house, and those encounters, I also, love Paris. He adored Paris. 
and those encounters were, were always a joy for me. Paris with François Brun was complete. So when I, as I said, when I started my contact, I met him many times after that, in conferences in Paris and other places, and he was always, gave me very good support, wrote for the ICC Journal, which I founded with my friend Carlos Fernandez in the year 2000. We published these articles and interviews and many other things from him. And he also came to Vigo in one of those conferences about ITC that was organized, a conference that was organized by the ITC Journal in one of these beautiful historical buildings in Vigo. In that uh, conference he was together with other famous um, um, conferences such as uh, David Fontana, Walter von Lucadau, Sylvie Hart, uh, Sylvie Hart Wright, and perhaps the most famous of, of them all, the physicist Olivier Costa de Beauregard, who came with François Brun. He was his friend. In um, uh, his books, François Brun's books were translated in many languages. All of them, but especially this one, Les Morts nous parle, which are I just showed, and others, um, and um, in uh, one of those books, which is Les Morts nous parlent, nous aiment, excuse me, I found, while I was writing my own book, my last book, Electronic Contact with the Dead, What Do the Voices Tell Us? This is a book which deals mainly with the um, comparison between uh, Maggie and Jules Archwischbach communications received in Luxembourg that François Brun as well as Professor Senkowski witnessed on many occasions and the other great transcommunicator, the, the other great ITC operator Adolf Holmes in Rivenish, Germany. So I compared extensively these communications from both these sources, Luxembourg and Adolf Holmes in Rivenish, also with my own um, communications from Rio do Tempo station. Let me Leave, uh, say this, Adolf Holmes' communications, which I quote extensively in this book, uh, were mainly received on his computer screen as computer texts. Some of them are photo photographed and some of them are in my book too. Anyway, while I was writing this book, I was also reading in detail this book by François Brun, Les Morts nous aiment. And to my great surprise, let me explain, this, um, this, uh, this, this uh, book was compiled by uh, uh, Father François Brun. It's a compilation of automatic writing messages received from the 1939, end of the 1930s, to 1980 at least, by two or three generations of the same family. So as I was saying, I found here content in these automatic writing messages, which was, which is so similar to some of the content of the Harfischbach messages and Adolf Holmes' computer texts. So I also quoted this book extensively in my last book. 
because I indeed this is not about ITC, as I said, but besides mysticism, uh, ITC was one of the main interests of François Brun. He used to call it the good news of grace, which is a beautiful expression, I find. And in this ITC conference that we organized here in Vigo, well, too, it's a matter of fact, he spoke, uh, I don't recall the subject, but after that, we, um, uh, Professor David Fontana and myself, interviewed him on different uh, subjects, one of them ITC. And I will read to you what he says here about, well, two or three paragraphs. It's page 53. The question was, can you tell us about your first experiences with ITC and why you have retained a particular interest in this area of psychical research? David Fontana and myself asked. François Brun replied, My first contact with ITC took place on June 22, 1987, in the home of my friends Jules and Maggie Arschfischbach. Before agreeing to meet me, they consulted their communicators in the next world and were told that I was acceptable. The communicators also indicated that I would be able to contribute to the dissemination of information about ITC and they recommended that I be given a copy of the cassette of the messages that would be recorded during my visit. That, same very day, that very same day we received a long communication in French from Constantin Raudiva, as you know, one of the pioneers of EVP, the other one being, of course, the great Friedrich Jürgensen. So, he continued. Also, a communication from the, te the technician. I will explain that the technician was allegedly the, the high entity who had never been incarnated that directed the direct radio voice contacts in Luxembourg. The technician quoted to me a lengthy passage from the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians on the subject of, of the resurrection of the dead. All this was quite exceptional in that the native language of Jules and Magyar Fischbach is Luxembourgish. And it is usually in this language or in German that they receive their messages, which do not include quotations from the scriptures. Very understandable, isn't it? And he continues in another section of the same interview. While at the home of my friends Maggie and Jules Arschfischbach, I have witnessed several times the reception of messages from the group called Timestream. And often, in my honor, the communicators have, at least in part, spoken in French. As you undoubtedly know, I have never had the slightest doubt about the honesty of Jules and Maggie or the genuineness of the communications. So this is how he got, uh, well, that's how he had his first contact with uh, ITC. But he was also uh, a great, um, François Brun was a lover of God and of Jesus Christ. One of his uh, main interests in life was to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And that is the reason why um, at the last 
times of his life in this world, he renounced the Catholic faith and adopted the Orthodox faith. And you can see the video of this beautiful ceremony at the cathedral in Paris in Jean-Michel Grandsir's, the director of the magazine Parascience, in his Facebook. It is indeed worth seeing, seeing sorry, and I'm sure he would be, he, would, he, he was delighted because that's what he always wanted to go back to original Christianism. So I will finish by saying, à toujours, cher François, I do love you and thank you.